talk about artificial general intelligence and uh, your forthcoming speech at the Singularity Summit. So what are you going to talk about? Well, first of all, artificial general intelligence, as, as you just stated, is a pivotal theme within the discussions on the singularity. Um, I'll be talking about an argument, which I'll you know, provide in detail during the summit, that the uh, field of AGI is actually happening or, go, or is bound to happen within the next few years rather than decades out, based on a theory that argues that AGI can be constructed out of, uh, coarsely speaking, two subsystems. Uh, one uh, subsystem is the information representation. Um, it's how we as humans or mammals um, learn to model or, or um, represent the world with which we interact. And uh, that is going to be based on um, uh, recent progress in the field of deep machine learning, which is a niche within machine learning that is a biologically inspired framework that tries to mimic the way that, that mammals uh, represent information, the way the, the cortex represent information. The complementing subsystem is the uh, is based on reinforcement learning theory, which once again is a biologically inspired uh, sort of uh, approach or framework that has uh, systems learning by basically interacting with the environment, much like we do, sort of uh, you know interacting and figuring out what works and what doesn't, uh, based on essentially reward signals or reinforcement signals that are received both externally from the environment as well as uh, reward signals that we produce internally. These two complementing uh, components, I think, form the basis for potentially designing AGI systems, systems that are bound to, to have uh, human-level intelligence and, and possibly beyond. And the argument is perhaps we're at a time where the pieces of the puzzle are readily available. Uh, there's no uh, discovery that needs to be made in order for us to be able to make that quantum leap and, and start designing AGI systems. I think it's it's more of a focused engineering effort that is uh, that is needed and I'll discuss that during the, uh, the summit. You will be modeling a mind that is not necessarily human. Um, there is a cognitive school um, called the Embodied Cognition School that uh, says basically you do need a body, uh, you do need uh, uh, the experiential, uh, deep uh, understanding of the world around you that a given body uh, framework gives. Uh, so I assume that one, you do not subscribe to this, and two, uh, the AGI that uh, you will be designing uh, might be, be very different from our uh, mind. That, that's very true. Uh, the AGI systems that we're bound to, to uh, build and, and evolve are going to be very different than, than biological uh, systems, definitely humans. Uh, as for the embodiment, embodiment issue, that, that's a very good question. I think as long as, you know, if we were to argue that an AGI system or a system is AGI, uh, the environment, the world with which it interacts needs to be rich enough. Um, and, and as you mentioned, there's two to sort of uh, ways to approach this, either to say, okay, there has to be a physical body, physical entity that interacts with the physical world, which is inherently very rich, or create an AGI system in the virtual environment. Um, I think virtual environments um, have a, a way to go to be to be as you know close to being as rich as as the the real world is, and that kind of uh, makes the argument for a system being true AGI a little more difficult in the virtual virtual space. Um, to that end, I, I would actually say that that it's that it's um, you know it might be a first step to uh, experiment and create systems or AGI systems within the virtual context. But at some point, I actually do feel they have to be um, have a physical uh, interaction with the world or interaction with the physical world. Um, the uh, software system itself uh, is bound to be extremely complex, uh, potentially. Uh, several orders of magnitude more complex than anything that has been attempted uh, uh, before. So, um, what makes you think that, uh, apart from understanding different components, uh, the uh, entire system will be uh, functional, coherent, it will actually be um, either working out of the box or sufficiently capable of uh, introspection uh, in order to self-heal and self-debug? Uh, uh, 
I think encouragement in this context comes actually from the electronics, from the VLSI space. Over the last, you know, Moore's law has been has, has kept on for uh, for a good number of years now, and is projected uh, to continue for at least almost another decade. I believe that's the recent, the latest uh, assessments. Uh, we are now able to pack. Two billion and, and 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 more even transistors on a single die on a single chip, and so if you look at the human brain, you know our brain operates at a very low frequency. Uh, neurons operate at around 100 to 200 hertz, not kilohertz, not megahertz, uh, but it but there's a hundred billion of these operating concurrently, and so arguably the the computational and uh, power of the brain comes not from the sheer gigahertz frequencies, but from the massive parallelism or massively parallel architecture uh, or fabric uh, over which it's implemented. And I think that's what we have to be inspired by when we consider designing AGI systems. I believe that uh, designing custom hardware at the perhaps at the at the transistor level is is the way to go about uh, you know achieving the kind of scale that we expect to to have in order to to obtain AGI. Um, and then to your the second part of your question in terms of, of uh, retro, uh, instead of the system being been conscious on all of what that may, may mean, um, I believe, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of, of, of this uh, interview, at the, at the core of the information representation subsystem, there's a deep learning engine, if you will. Um, it, it, the underlying concept behind that is to have a hierarchical uh, architecture for representing information in the world. And again, again that's a very biologically inspired approach. Uh, the neurocognitive state that you have across the layers of this hierarchy are, many believe, will possess uh, much of what we associate with, with consciousness and many of the other cognitive, um, cognitive functions of the human brain. And so it, it very well may be a product of, of implementing um, the, the system, the AGI system, using this deep learning, this hierarchical information representation approach uh, that would yield perhaps not identical experience or, or behavior to that of the human or a mammal, but, but something that by, by any measure would be intelligent and perhaps human level equivalent uh, in, intelligent in the very near future. Uh, do you have a roadmap uh, in order to achieve uh, the goals of your project, a, a timeline? I truly believe that the uh, core discoveries have been made and it's more of, of having the community uh, put together a, a, an engineering effort of, of putting the pieces together and creating uh, uh, creating this, this uh, quantum leap, this uh, um, advancement in, in artificial intelligence to yield AGI. I think, I believe that if there, if there was consensus around there and the, and the resources um, uh, designated to make this a reality, I believe it, would, it, it could be within less than a decade. My prediction is less than 10 years we could have AGI, um, human level intelligence systems. It is um, mostly a question of uh, a brain power dedicated to it, uh, potentially even a small team of uh, half a dozen or a dozen people. Or is it also a question of uh, uh, larger resources? Are we talking about uh, a million dollars level of effort or a billion dollars level of effort? I think it's it's more towards the modest end of that spectrum, probably within in, in millions. The uh, good news is there are um, computational fabrics such as GPUs, graphical processing units, that are becoming. Uh, very powerful and a very cost efficient, uh, very uh, attractive cost efficiency point. Um, so I, th I believe that you can uh, demonstrate a breakthrough a quantum leap in AGI um, involvement using uh, relatively modest resources, although to actually make the complete leap and design truly human level intelligence systems, as I mentioned, you, you'll need custom hardware, you'll need dedicated chips and an effort that typically takes a little longer and, and more resources once again, I, I, would, I would estimate that to be um, in the millions rather than close to a billion. I think it's, it's more on the modest end of that spectrum. Looking forward to hear you uh, in New York shortly. Thank you very much.